In this video, we're going to be continuing on with our Twitter Python API bot. And specifically what we're going to do in this video is we're going to analyze the sentiment of a given tweet. So we're going to determine whether or not the sentiment of a given tweet is overly positive, negative, or neutral. And for uh, this purpose, we're going to make use of a module called text blob. So this is something that we'll have to install if you don't already have it installed. This a uh, particular module has a built-in sentiment analyzer that's already trained on uh, data. So we can just make use of the analyzer itself to apply to our tweets to determine whether or not they are positive or negative based on this on this text blob analyzer. So first and foremost, let's just open up another terminal and I'll make this a little bit bigger. What we'll need is this text blob thing. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we have that installed. pip install text blob. So if you do that, if you already have it installed, you'll see this requirement already satisfied. If you don't, then you'll see it installed in your machine. Once you've got that, you should be good to go. So now that we have that installed, let me just close this. We will go ahead and import this. So let's go ahead and import this over here. I'll say from text blob import the class text blob. And another thing that we're also going to make use of in this video is a regular expression. And this will be made use of to clean the tweet, essentially to remove any extra characters or hyperlinks or things that are not necessarily indicative of the actual text content as, as part of the tweet. We want to remove all that because that's not necessarily going to help us in figuring out the sentiment of a given tweet. So let's go ahead and just import RE, which is the regular expression module in Python. And we've got everything uh, ready to go. So RE should also already be installed on your machine if you have Python. So you don't need to install that separately. You don't need to do a pip install or anything like that. So let's go to the bottom of the file. And I'm going to clean up some of these things. So I'm going to get rid of these plotting uh, lines here. So all of these were from the previous video. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to keep the data frame creation because we'll be making use of that. Specifically, we'll be adding another column which will have the sentiment analysis for each tweet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some functions here in the tweet analyzer class. Uh, the first function, which I'm just going to call it clean tweet, will make use of the regular expression library to clean the tweet and remove any hyperlinks or extra characters. So this is a member of the class. It's going to take self and then also the tweet to be cleaned. So what I'm actually going to do, since the regular expression is a little bit cumbersome and verbose and annoying to write out, I'm just going to paste it right in there. Uh, and this is from a file that I've already saved off to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, of course, like I always do, have the code available on my GitHub. So instead of pausing the video and writing that whole terrible expression out, you can just download the code and copy it from there. So again, basically all that's really going on here, this looks a bit complicated, but it's just removing special characters from the string, from the tweet specifically, and then removing the hyperlinks and then returning the result of that clean tweet. So we have a function that does that, it's responsible for that. Now we want another function that's going to be responsible for calling text blob and using the sentiment analy analyzer provided from text blob and then returning the sentiment. So let's call this function analyze sentiment. This will be taking self and then also the tweet that we want to analyze the sentiment of. So we'll go ahead and create an object that will be returned to us from text blob. We'll call this object analysis and we'll set this equal to text blob. And then what we're going to feed into this is essentially what we want to analyze the sentiment of, which in this case is the cleaned tweet. So we're going to say self dot clean tweet and then we're going to feed in that tweet that we get into this function, make sure that it's clean, pass in the clean tweet into this text blob thing, this class, and then this will allow us to leverage the sentiment analysis tools that text blob provides to us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do just that. So we're going to say if analysis.sentiment.polarity. So what we're doing here is analysis is the object created from text blob. There's a function of that called sentiment, which will make use of the sentiment analysis engine. And then there's a further function that's called polarity, which is a property of that analysis, which basically tells us whether or not the, the tweet in this case is positive or negative. So the polarity is a metric of whether or not that tweet is positive or negative in nature. So if this property, if this is greater than zero, we're going to return one. So this is to indicate that the polarity is positive. So it's a, it's a positively interpreted tweet. So we're going to return one in that case. So else if the sentiment, so analysis.sentiment.polarity 
that polarity. If this is equal to zero, then we essentially don't know whether or not it's positive or negative. So it's just going to be neutral. So if it's just a neutrally analyzed tweet, we're just going to return zero to denote that. So zero will be the case when the tweet is just a neutral tweet. And then otherwise, so otherwise, uh, the case would be that the polarity is negative. And in that case, the sentiment analysis engine determined that the tweet is actually negative. So what we're going to do to denote that is return minus one. So that would be the way that we uh, make use of this function to let the user know that the tweet was analyzed to be negative. So we've done that. We've gone ahead and created the clean tweet and analyze sentiment functions. So now we're going to go ahead and make use of them. Let's go down to the main part of, the, of this file here. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to save this. What we're going to do is we're going to build on the data frame that we've created from the tweet, uh, the, what is it called? The tweet analyzer class. So we're going to build on that data frame. So we're going to add another column, which is going to be the sentiment analysis for each of the tweets that we have in this data frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, I'm actually just going to copy one of these lines up here and then add it after this one. So really what we're doing is we've created this data frame, which again is returned to us from this function as part of the tweet analyzer class. And then what I'm doing is I'm adding another column onto that data frame, which I'm going to call, let's call it sentiment. And this is going to have the one, zero, or minus one, depending on the sentiment analysis of that tweet. So what we're going to do, we're going to change one thing in here. Instead of saying the retweet count, we obviously don't want that. What we want in this case, let's see, I think I deleted too much there. So what we want in this case is we want to actually call our function. So we want to say tweet analyzer dot analyze sentiment. And then we're, we're going to pass in the tweet. So we're going to go ahead and pass in that tweet. And then we're going to be looping through each of the tweets in the tweets list that we have here. So basically, actually, I, it doesn't know what tweets is. So we need to specify what we're actually looping through. So instead of tweets, which is clear from the function up here. So tweets is defined here, but it's not defined down here in the main. So we want to specify that we're looping through the data frame that corresponds to the entry, or the column that has the column tweets because again that is where we're storing each of these um, each of these each of the text that corresponds to each of the tweets so just to kind of unpack what's going on here again we're looping through each tweet in the data frame column corresponding to the heading tweets which is again created up here and returned in this line here and then what we're doing is we're doing a very similar thing which should look familiar if you saw I think video three where we did uh, these things to kind of determine and create new columns corresponding to the ID, length, date, source, things like that. We're doing the same thing, only now the value that we're storing at that column for that given tweet is the sentiment analysis of that tweet. And the way that we're doing that is we're making use of that function that we created, which is analyze sentiment, which returns zero, one, or minus one. We're feeding in that tweet, it's gonna get cleaned, it's gonna get analyzed, and then we're going to have one of those three numbers. So we have our new column here, which is the sentiment analysis. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this works as expected. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to print out the first 10 entries in the data frame. So I'm gonna say print df.head, and then I'm just going to pass in 10, which is just letting Python know that we only want to see the first 10 entries in this data frame. So I'm gonna write that, I'm gonna clear the terminal, and then I'm gonna say Python, and the name of this file is sentiment analysis Twitter data.py. So if we do that, it'll get the tweets, and then we see we have our data frame here, we've got our familiar columns, and then we also have the sentiment. So we have minus one for this first tweet, it looks like uh, that definitely could be phrases controversial, minus one, it looks like there's not enough of that tweet is showing there for me to determine whether or not it's really uh, controversial or not. Third one is neutral, congratulations argue maybe that's positive. The next congratulations tweet here, that's positive, so that makes sense. Uh, thank you, thank you is interpreted to be positive. Next one is neutral, but Ivanka, and the remaining uh, tweets are positive. So from this very cursory glance, Donald Trump seems like a very positive guy. So yeah, so there's that. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, then don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As I mentioned before, all of the code for this will be available on the GitHub and I'll have a link to that in the description. You can just download that there. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.